properly explain the development of the colonies, one must look to the start of the colonies, or in our basketball analogy, a check. A check signifies the arrival of the Europeans or the start of the game. Competition for the world's resources for the growth of empires was the main motivation for the expansion into the colonies or mercantilism for the motivation for profit. This is represented in our basketball analogy by a jump ball or two people jumping for the same ball. In basketball and in most sports, one finds roots around defensive players. In this case, this represents the European nations finding roots into the Americas and establishing the southern, mid-Atlantic, and new English colonies for the main goal of mercantilism and the growth of the empire. With the trade routes established, complex economic systems could be implemented between the colonies and New England. This is represented in our game by a long pass, signifying the distance goods had to travel in order to go to England for the overall goal of the empire to gain wealth. In 1651, the Navigation Acts were passed in which North American trade was restricted, only allowing them to trade with England, severely limiting any growth opportunities and any opportunity at globalization for the colonies. In basketball, this represents a block or a pack. Despite the heavy restrictions imposed on the Americas by England, the North American colonies flourished and they steadily grew bigger with each expansion of its land, and in basketball terms, this means scoring a ton of points. The only issue with rapid expansion of the colonies is that there is somebody already on the land, the Native Americans. While some, like the Iroquois, adapted new technologies into their lifestyle, others were more hostile towards the settlers, but the growth knew no bounds and the Native Americans ceded their land. In the basketball, this can be considered a foul or an uncalled for play not present in the widely accepted rules. The growth of the land resulted in easy, cheap, and plentiful resources to be shipped back to England with goods such as cotton, tobacco, rice, and indigo. This easy gain of wealth and resources could be considered a free throw or free points against another team. In response to European demand, tribes such as the Iroquois began to devote more attention to fur trapping during the 17th century. Furs and pelts provided tribes the means to purchase colonial goods until late into the 18th century. Early colonial Native American relations were an uneasy mix of cooperation and conflict. On the one hand, there were exemplary relations which prevailed during the first half a century of Pennsylvania's existence. On the other were a long series of setbacks, skirmishes, and wars which almost invariably led to a Native American defeat and further loss of land. The first of the important Native American uprisings occurred in Virginia in 1622, when some 347 whites were killed, including a number of missionaries who had recent, just recently come to Jamestown. The Picot War followed in 1637 as local tribes tried to prevent the settlement of the Connecticut River region. In 1675, Philip, the son of the chief who made original peace with the Pilgrims in 1621, attempted to unite the tribes of southern New England against further European encroachment of their lands. In the struggle, however, Philip lost his life and many Native Americans were sold into servitude. The steady influx of settlers into the backwoods region of the eastern colonies disrupted Native American life. As more and more game were killed off, tribes were faced with the difficult choice of going hungry, going to war, or moving and coming into conflict with other tribes to the west. In 1570, five tribes joined to form the most democratic nation of its time, the ho di no sao ni or League of the Iroquois. The League was run by a council made up of 50 representatives from each of the five member tribes. The council dealt with matters common to all the tribes, but had no say in how the free and equal tribes ran their day-to-day -day affairs. No tribe was allowed to make war by itself, and the council passed laws to deal with crimes such as murder. The League was a strong power in the 1600s and 1700s, and it traded furs with the British and sided with them against the French in the War for Dominance of America between 1754 and 1763. The British may not have won that war if it weren't for the support from the League of the Iroquois. 
Native American land was generally taken by the settlers or paid little price based on the justification of them only using for the land for hunting and not for living on. The reason the land was being taken was due to the fact that the population was growing rapidly due to a mostly reliable food source. The population grew from 260,000 settlers in 1700 to 2,150,000 in 1770. In comparison, the French colonial population grew from 15,000 to 90,000 in 1775 i.e. just 4% of the English total. In fact, the English colonial population doubled almost every 25 years in the 1700s. In the 1700s, far fewer English immigrated to the colonies than in the previous century, from 350,000 to 80,000, a 77% decrease. England needed to keep its native labor supply at home while increasing its colonial population across the ocean. Recruitment was the answer, and England recruited mainland Europeans aggressively, offering inducements including free passage, land, and provisions. The population was primarily Scots, Germans, and enslaved Africans. Between 1700 and 1775, 145,000 Scots and 100,000 Germans arrived, many fleeing economic hardship, religious persecution, and political upheaval, often all three. The human reality behind the numbers was readily apparent in Pennsylvania, the fastest growing colony where the population exploded from 18,000 in 1700 to 120,000 by 1750. With advancements in technology, some Native American tribes, like the Iroquois, adapted the technology into their lifestyle and allowed themselves to become a massive competitive advantage over other Native American tribes, growing their own dominance in the area. This could be compared to a really good basketball player versus a bunch of really bad basketball players due to the massive skill advantage. And here's some fun facts about the colonization period. The very first colonists lived in Jamestown, Virginia. The colonies had governments within America, but the British were technically in charge. The trip from England to America took about two and a half months by boat. The very first attempts at colonization were failures. Delaware was the first state to ratify the Constitution, making it the first state to join the United States of America. Virginia was named after Queen Elizabeth I. Jamestown was the first capital of Virginia, but it was removed to Richmond in 1779. Jamestown was made of 104 colonists who landed in April 1607. Many came to America in search of religious freedom. The Mayflower landed in Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts in 1620. Most families were very large, often with six or more kids. Georgia was named after King George III. One of the first things colonists did when they arrived was start farming so they could have food for the winter. Common crops grown were corn, wheat, rice, barley, oats, beans, pumpkins, and squash. While there were many advantages to having colonies, such as a good location for farming and a connection to trade routes, the colonies did have restricted freedoms from England, and settlers did force their ideologies onto natives, sometimes in southern con colonies, referring to them as mad people. This is represented as missed shots in basketball. So what is the big picture of the colonization? While there isn't one specific reason for the creation of the colonies, the effectiveness and its eventual growth into a country is undeniable, with the overall goal of the British Empire to establish a global presence as well as growing the empire's wealth and resources, the American colonies certainly provided plenty of resources, but at the expense of the natives in the area. These expenditures include disease, war, and slavery. However. The arrival of the pilgrims brought a new adapter die lifestyle to the natives, meaning the native tribes who traded for new technologies such as metal blades and guns had more dominance in the area and could expand their own horizons. For the colonies, their change in lifestyle meant creating a new way of life, separate from the one in England. To create this new lifestyle, many ideas and technologies were borrowed from England and parts of Europe, such as the architecture in New England, Mid-Atlantic, and Southern colonies reflecting this. With the introduction of the new culture into the area, and many different, many different subcultures formed, and the overall area became more diverse and eventually leading to the development of the United States of America.
as expressed by the ah. anger of a loss in basketball, tensions among the colonies would boil over and a revolution would be imminent. But that's a story for another day. <laughs>